Okie dokie, everyone. Welcome back. I, uh, just doing a quick short video today. Still having issues with my tooth. And I went ahead and recorded this, waiting for the ibuprofen and aspirin to kick in. So, uh, um, now that it's kicked in a little bit better, I can speak a little bit better and narrate uh, instead of doing it while I play, which is good because I actually played about an hour and a half and I condensed it down to 20 minutes. So, um, like I said, I was going to close up these mines, but before I did, I wanted to get some of the minerals. In this case, they're just coal down here. So, uh, yeah, we just um, chopped through some of this. Um, the coal becomes really helpful, of course, for the torches. And later on down the road, I'm going to be... I'm going to be putting up a lot of torches. Because the idea is I want to light up the village. I don't want to have a lot of the zombie creepers and all that stuff in there. I don't want them killing the villagers and, and me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So we went ahead and uh, cleared out a little bit of this. I started getting zoned out and getting more cobblestone, of course. So it was really nice to just, you know, get a little bit of uh, dig time. But what ended up happening with this whole video, um, we'll fade to black and move on to covering this up here. What ended up happening is I started realizing how much of an undertaking, <clears throat> excuse me, an undertaking this is really going to be. The hour and a half that it took me to do everything here, <laughs> squeaky cow, because it sped up. The hour and a half it took me, I barely even made a dent. So this this episode's still going to only show a dent of what I'm wanting to do uh, with this entire uh, reconstruction or build of Fairhaven and the, um, uh, how shall we call it, like the Nexus Earth universe as far as the, the, the village goes in this area and the Jester's Tavern and, and one thing I didn't mention on my last video is there's actually a really great like precedence with the starting point with that sand and kind of swamp slash area. Oh, real quick. So I started digging to get this road and I'm like, oh shit, there's a, uh, <laughs> there's actually um, a cavern underneath. Now I was hearing some of the zombies. But then it started getting louder. And of course, naturally, as soon as I open this up, I, I want to make sure there's none on one side. So we just head to the other side, and behold, there's a bunch of them. Like after this guy, there's one more. I probably killed two more after that. And so I started realizing, I think some folks mentioned that there's something that spawns the zombies. So later on, we'll, we'll see a little more of that. Um, naturally, I had to <laughs> make sure I caught these guys because I was almost dead. Um, but we started clearing more of the road, try to get assessment of like where I could close this all up and how much I'm going to have to change. It quite literally is a construction undertaking, so I thought, uh, uh, well, well, we'll make it fun and we'll start get some more stone for later yeah but um well saying uh, with the desert area there's um kind of a town called last chance in my story that before you go out into a big desert area you stop by last chance and one of the previous places they were at before they got to last chance was Fairhaven. so the distance isn't too bad it's pretty similar so this map is just really working out well for my comic universe. So we're going to just still keep modifying and doing what we can. Again, Bob Ross moment. Make it as you please. 
Um, so then I started digging a little bit more of the road and started realizing, aha, I'm getting a lot closer to the source of these zombies. Yeah, everything was starting to get louder and louder, and behold, we have an opening to another area. And he peeked down in there, and there it is. That, from my understanding, is spawning the zombies. Um, I could do some research after, of course, I'm in the middle of playing the game, and now editing. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'll look that up later. Uh, naturally, anybody watching the video, feel free to comment below. Uh, let me know what you know about how that works because and I actually edited it out here after this moment <laughs> I dropped down I died it sucked <laughs> so I came back I recollected my stuff and saw there was a chest down here opened it up got some gold ingots in there some sort of like iron saddle I think uh, yeah pretty cool stuff and of course I forgot that you could break up the chest and take it with you but I was looking at that and I'm like, I don't want any more stuff to spawn. I have no idea if this actually works. But I went ahead and I just blocked it. Uh, then I reminded myself, well, I, I could just cover this up for now and not worry about it. And of course we start hearing more zombies again. So um, I don't think me covering up that thing worked. Uh, because yeah, later on in the video, you hear some high pitch zombies. <laughs> and so we take a quick little view now. Of where we're at a little reminder that we're going to be filling all this in with water a good portion of it at least and speed it back up because again there's probably a good hour of me going through um you know minus once again getting the minerals here found out there's lava and oh and so i decided since there's lava below i wanted to go ahead and set a basic marker for part of the jester's tavern which will end up being an area I'm going to kind of like dig a well. Not a water well, but a well for me to get down. I'll, I'll build a ladder and I'll be going down to that cavern below. And this will probably end up being my mining entrance. And I want to look up a little bit more about lava later. But I want to see if there's a way similar to water where you could build a infinite lava uh, setup. Yeah. And of course, with speeding up the video here, it, it, you see it's just like how labor intensive this project is already becoming. There's all these pieces, and this is just dirt. You're just relocating dirt, but it's quite essentially just a construction project. Uh, except in this case, my character is hand building everything. Uh, and not, there's no <laughs> backhoes and, and trucks and stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, so one of the biggest lessons I learned in this very first maybe 15 minutes of trying to get water is I started learning about where you could put water and how much water you got to grab and put in places. And later on, I realized, well, I probably should have broke up the grass. Um, if you pour water in a flat plain, it will take out the grass that way. But when it's in the nooks and the crannies there, it actually takes, like, it messes up what what you're doing. So, and I started pouring the water here. I started seeing that it's going down in some of the lower areas. Eventually, uh, you're going to see me cover that up because, again, it takes away from the water source that I'm trying to put in. But yeah, it, it, it's really fun. Like, this whole area is going to be... Um, it's going to be water. It's going to be kind of river slash lake bedish. And if I want to make it flat water, I just basically have to fill all the available spots and it'll be flat open lake. If I want it to run like it is right now, then I leave it out in some splotchy areas. And that'll end up actually making it so that there's some flow and there's some movement. So it's kind of neat. I'll, I'll work that all out later on. So... Um, Nexus Earth, as a, as a universe, there's a lot more to it, of course, than I could do with Minecraft. Again, I, I have elves and trolls and dwarves, I have all that stuff. I have aliens and demons and angels. The, the whole comic book universe is 
essentially my Mary Sue. It's out so I can create anything I want and any basic fantasy I want. I mean, let's not turn that necessarily in the bad adult naughty thing, but I'm actually talking about just serious storytelling. Anything you want to create, it's possible. And I know stories in general can be that way anyways, but I wanted to kind of create at least a little bit of a a reason why it's possible. And Nexus Earth was just that way. And uh, multi-dimension theories. Anything happens out there. Some universe somewhere. And if you're in a Nexus where a lot of universes come together, well then all those possibilities come together too. So <laughs> it's a long convoluted idea of it. Um, but as you can see, uh, the water here, we're going to get back to that real quick. I was starting to kind of just gauge out really like how much of an undertaking it's going to be. And you saw that I've already been through several nights already. Um, again, this is an hour and a half worth of video that I condensed down to 20 minutes. And of course, like even now, we're 10 minutes in, we're halfway through. Uh, so I want to make sure that I can at least do a little bit of storytelling while you watch the build in the background. My character Tim Garn was modeled after myself because I myself, I, I kind of feel like I, I know what I would do if this fantastical world was something I could be in. And it's kind of funny because as a comic creator and artist, these ideas of what I would like to do uh, with the character and what I would do myself started kind of merging a little bit after a number of years. It actually helped me build a little bit of confidence in myself. And I, I wrote scripts and stories about these characters that have helped, helped influence my life. Now, you know, without getting too much into my personal life, it, obviously, you know, I haven't had any superhero type stuff or fantasy or sci-fi stuff happen to me. Uh, but what I do mean, like, is if you're creating a character that you wish you yourself could be, and you see the things that they say and they do, you start realizing if, if you grow up as a, a not very confident individual, that you start becoming more confident. You know, at least if you take to heart the characters that you're creating. And once I started kind of realizing that, and it took you know, 10, 15, 20 years, <laughs> uh, once I started realizing that, uh, I definitely became a more confident person. Uh, that's a little interpersonal uh, perspective about myself, but something I thought I'd share because I. I just, I, I wish others would be able to do the same. I wish I could pass that along. That, you know, it doesn't hurt to create that, that confidence in oneself. So, um, real quick. So, you see how much water I have. And I've got a whole bunch more to go. So, yeah, we're still filling in this whole area. And I started building a path that was going to go south. I'm going to have to build a path that's going to go north. And that north is going to go to the um, last chance uh, original starting point and we're going to start we're going to start calling that uh, last chance um, but yeah so anything i could do if you're a writer a creator i don't profess to know um everything i i'm, I'm definitely not a writer that knows how to properly story tell but i'd like still to create stories so i if anything maybe not a writer i'm a i'm a creator <laughs> um but yeah anything i could do to help um help people have confidence and try to really appreciate themselves as well as the things that they're into um But anyways, uh, I just try to be a supportive person when I can. I've got my own issues. Other people have their own issues. But I still believe it's it's a good thing to be there for people when and if you can. 
So, um, so with Tim Garden, he's supposed to be your kind of, you know, see the story through his eyes kind of character, but he's also supposed to be the relatable character. Like he's, he is the dorky, you know, not always sure of himself kind of person, but kind of proud of, um, of being who he is still. He, he does like being a dork. He likes being into the things he's into. So, in the situation for the Nexus Earth story, uh, for the Tim Garn story at least, when he comes across Aneda and Lily, these two elves, uh, who, you know, full transparency, he finds very attractive. It's a situation where eventually it doesn't become massively overwhelming for him. He actually just feels like he's starting to kind of fit in. And as he starts fitting in, the idea is that Aneda, who actually doesn't like humans, and there's a story behind that, of course, and Lily, who likes everybody. <laughs> She's just that lovable, adorable uh, little one. You have kind of like the three different levels of personalities uh, between Tim Garn, Aneda, and Lily. Uh, Aneda's more headstrong, uh, but she's been around over 60, 70 years uh, fighting wars and losing people, you know, afraid that she's going to lose other people that, that are close to her, so she doesn't get too close to people sometimes. Yeah, so it ends up being kind of a, a an interesting dynamic that I feel all three characters are actually going to help influence and change each other. So I look forward to, you know, someday actually creating and making this. Um, it's, it's partially my own lack of confidence in myself. Uh, it's laziness. It's depression. It's life, you know, uh, marriage, kids, divorce, a debt, <laughs> um, and still trying to do what you want in life, yet also be responsible, of course. And, you know, in some cases I get a little personal about all this, but I, I bring this up because I do still want to tell people, no matter how rough it gets, if you're creative, you have an idea, you have something you want to do, do it. Just, yeah, just do it. Just keep trying. Don't, don't expect to get rich. Don't expect to be famous. But man, if you want to do something, you want to be something in life, do it. So, all right. Well, as you can see, you know, we, we got through most of this here. Uh, we set it up pretty decently. Um, I want to thank you folks really for checking out these videos. I know at most, uh, right now they only have 10 or 20 views by the time I've recorded this episode. Uh, episodes 1, 2, and 3 that is. But oddly enough, something with Minecraft is very soothing, very relaxing for me. And so I'm going to keep it up. I'm going to try to do these daily and yeah, see where they can go. Um, I'm going to be out of town next week, but I will be pre-recording some episodes and we'll still be dropping those daily if everything works out, of course. Um, so wrapping this up, let's watch the sunset. Sun's getting kind of low, big guy. <laughs> Uh, really is quite fascinating. A simplistic game like this, and yet a sunset can be such a relaxing thing. <laughs> Alright. Well, folks, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you can. Hit subscribe. Pass along my uh, channel to others if you don't mind. We'll have some 
more movie and trailer reviews here tomorrow and possibly some more uh, Overwatch and other things when I get back from my trip. Alright folks, take care and have an amazing weekend.